Hey there, it's John from Tiny, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with our CMS starter config using a hybrid self-hosted and cloud setup. So TinyMCE is used in many CMSs, including Joomla, Shopify, and Umbraco. And what we've done is we've looked at how many of these CMSs are using TinyMCE and came up with a starter config specific for CMSs. It's a great starting point if you're building a CMS from scratch, updating the rich text editing capabilities within your existing CMS, or extending a third-party CMS to add rich text editing capabilities. Now, there are a few reasons why you may want to use TinyMCE self-hosted on your app and loading premium plugins from the cloud. You may already have TinyMCE self-hosted in your app, and rather than switching everything to the cloud, you may just want to load the premium plugins for the cloud. You may also already be self-hosting, and maybe you just want to try out the CMS starter config to see if it's right for you. Either way, it's super easy to set up. So what I've got here is kind of a fake sample app, and we're going to look at how we can add the self-hosted CMS config as well as the cloud premium plugins to it. So we're going to start off by downloading the TinyMCE self-hosted zip file. I'm going to go to tiny.cloud slash get dash tiny. And then I'm going to click on download TinyMCE SDK. This is going to save a zip file to my computer. I'm going to extract it and add it to my project directory. So now you can see the tinymce files are right here. And we're going to include that tinymce.min.js. Now, while we're here, I should also mention that you can get tinymce self-hosted in a few other ways as well. You can download it using your favorite package manager like NPM, Yarn, Composer, or Nougat. And we also have over 12 framework integrations so that TinyMCE can easily be included using your favorite framework like React, Vue, or Angular. For more information, just check out that Get Tiny page that I'll post in the description. So I'll pause right here and I'll just show a few files that I have open on my computer. I've got my HTML for my app right here. I've got my starter config. And I've got some sample HTML that we're going to copy into the app later to test it out. So now I'm going to copy the CMS starter config into my app. I should note that the starter config by default loads from the cloud. So we need to make a few tweaks to make it load my local tinymce JavaScript file, as well as the plugins from the cloud. So we'll copy this over. The first thing I'm going to do is change the script tag to load the local tinymce min.js file. So now that we've got that set up, let's go into our app and see what it looks like. Okay, so it looks like it's still not loading. That's because right here we have this empty text area where we want to apply TinyMCE, but we haven't told TinyMCE to apply it to a text area yet. So we're going to go back to the code, and under selector, we're just going to type in text area. With TinyMCE, you have to tell it where to apply the editor to. Um, I've chosen an HTML element, text area, so that means that it'll be applied to any text area on the page, but you can also use CSS selectors like IDs or classes as well. So I'm going to hit save. We'll reload the page here. Okay, great. Looks like the editor is loading from the local JavaScript file. However, what you might notice is many of the premium plugins that we've included in the starter CMS config are not being loaded. That's because we still need to connect to the cloud with our API key to load the premium plugins. So to do that, you need to either sign up for a TinyMCE free trial or sign up for one of the TinyMCE premium plans. You just go to our pricing page and you can choose the plan that you want. Every plan has a 14 day free trial so you can really test drive the CMS starter config and see if it's right for you. Now of course, if you don't want to sign up for a plan or you don't want to sign up for a trial, you can always run the CMS starter config, you just need to disable the premium plugins. Okay, so once I've signed up and I've logged into my tiny cloud account, you'll see my API key there. We're going to need that later so let's just leave this tab open. Now to include TinyMCE premium plugins from the cloud with your self-hosted TinyMCE, you need to load a JavaScript file from the cloud with your API key. So we have a handy help article where you can copy the code snippet that you need to load TinyMCE premium plugins from the cloud. I'll paste the link to this article in the video description.
Okay, so remember that API key that we had? We need to paste that into this code snippet. So I'm gonna go back to my account, copy my API key, and paste it right here. Awesome. So now if we go back to our app, it should load the premium plugins. And there you go, you're all set with the CMS starter config, self-hosted with premium plugins loaded from the cloud. It includes PowerPaste, which lets your users clean, copy, and paste from Microsoft Word, Google Docs, and other HTML sources, and Accessibility Checker to make sure that your users are creating compliant, accessible HTML. So, what's next? It's time to start playing around with the starter config to make it yours. Add, remove plugins as you see fit, change around the toolbar, and modify the other settings. You'll see there's tips inside the starter config so that you can learn more about how TinyMCE works and follow links to the relevant help articles. Now that your users can use TinyMCE within your app, you're going to want to learn how to get and set content from TinyMCE to make sure that their content can get saved to your CMS. I'll include a link in the description to this helpful blog article that shows you exactly how to do that. Of course, if you want to learn more, the docs are a great place to learn about how all the plugins work. And if you get stuck, be sure to head on over to Stack Overflow to post a question. Or if you're on a free trial or one of our premium plans, you can reach out directly to our support team. In future videos, we'll explore this configuration a bit more and some best practices for rich text editing within CMSs. Good luck.